What's up, everybody? It's Lee, and you've tuned into another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. We got a great guest today, Mariah Fuji McGarry. And yes, I had to practice that name about 6,000 times before I could say it that smoothly. Fuji McGarry, you'll hear me do it throughout the episode. Uh, she is a professional hockey player, she's a goaltender, she's also a nutritionist. And we really dove right into it. It's a quicker episode, it's about a half an hour about nutrition and yes i asked the questions and we asked the questions of give us the best three things to eat and where are you not supposed to eat and there's just a ton of information in this episode so make sure you enjoy it let us know what you need uh what you like about it make sure to subscribe to us follow us check out our facebook group our kids play hockey on facebook this audience has grown so quick and we appreciate every single one of you And we also have to let you know that this is uh probably the last time this episode is sponsored by powered by hockey wraparound.com use okph on HockeyWrapAround.com to get 20% off your order. Again, Hockey Wraparound makes the world's st top stick blade protector. Okay, so if your kids have hockey sticks and they use them outside and they're dragging them on the street, make sure you get this thing because it's a pretty well-known household name at this point. They also created the dry stick, which is changing how equipment is dried. Again, HockeyWrapAround.com, 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 and use OKPH for 20% off your order. But above all, enjoy this edition. Our kids play hockey with Mariah Fuji McGarry. <laughs> Say it three times fast. It's a tongue twister. Enjoy. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world, and welcome to another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. I'm Lee Elias. That's Michael Benelli and Christy Casciano Burns, and we are joined today by Mariah Fuji McGarry. I think I got that right. We'll find. Nice. Yes, yeah, so she's saying I did. We've been practicing. <laughs> Mariah hails from Markham, Ontario, and has been involved with the game for over 20 years. She played her college hockey at the University of Maine, enjoyed SKP Bratislava after graduating. She made her NWHL debut in 2019 with the Buffalo Buttes, and she is currently a member of the Hartford Well and the newly named PHF. Aside from hockey, Mariah is also the co-founder of Yeah! and a certified sports nutritionist, which is going to be the topic today, that has served Olympians, pro players, and young athletes around the world. I'm proud of two things, Mariah. One is I think I got your name pretty good. I'm going to say it again for fun. Mariah Fuji McGarry. That is her name, right? Yeah, yeah I'm getting the thumbs up for those of you listening. Um, and, and what we're going to dive into today, Mariah, is this has actually been a pretty heavily requested episode. Um, and it's all about nutrition. And, uh, you know, like we're going to confirm today that it is good to go to McDonald's after the game, correct? And that that Big Mac is actually the proper post-game meal. Um, no. Friends and families listening, we're going to get into that today, the, the what to eat, what not to eat, uh, and just general nutrition is not, it's not even limited to just eating, right, when you think about it, right? So, uh, Mariah, thanks so much for being here. It's great to have you on the show. Absolutely. My pleasure, Lee, and you absolutely nailed my name. You should uh, get hired for announcing the starting lineup. <laughs> uh, you know, I've, I've done that once in my life, never going to do it again. I just, I prefer to be here with my friends. I mean, we could do the Mariah! Fuji yeah, no, it's just not my thing. It's not my thing. But <laughs> that was um, good. Yeah, uh, yeah, you could have fooled, could have fooled us. Let, um, you know what? Next episode, guys, I'll introduce <laughs> you guys like that, and then I'll just like and, and myself. Um, but Mariah, let's jump right into it, okay? And I'm gonna I'm gonna hit with the like the main question right away. What is the one thing, or two things, or three things that you wish you could just tell hockey parents and coaches, like, don't do that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, what's that one thing that just like you see it all the time? And you're like, put your hand on your head, you, that, that emoji, right? That you want to tell them right away. And that'll draw them in to listen to the whole episode. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a great question to just start off with, because there is really a common theme when we're looking at hockey athletes and hockey families. And the biggest thing is going through that drive through. OK, that is the biggest thing. Because when you are going through that drive through that means that you don't have a plan. It means that you're leaving your nutrition up to randomness. And when you jump on the ice or you get your athlete to jump on the ice, do you leave it to randomness? No, right? You do so much preparation for them. You make sure their laundry is done. You make sure they air out their equipment. You make sure that they have a good night's sleep before. You make sure that they've watched NHL hockey. You make sure they're jumping out on the ice with private skills coaches, all these things. And so our number one thing that we advise is limit that processed food and takeout food. Mariah, Mariah, but the fast food pit stop, it's so easy. So easy. <laughs> it's right there. The kids are hungry. I didn't have a plan. Exactly. Help and 
That's exactly what we hear from hockey families. And we understand that these hockey parents have full schedules, right? Full-time jobs, multiple athletes, going to different ranks, got them in school. You know, even if it's virtual school, sometimes it's been more hectic for them. So we understand. And that's why we make it so simple for them to be able to have a very easy grocery list to be able to plug into, hit all the points. Now it's even easier than ever to be able to do online shopping. You just literally pull up your car, get the delivery sometimes, you know, directly to your house. And that way you have access to all the foods and um, mostly whole foods that you need. And then we give healthy alternatives for those processed foods. So then athletes are able to have the energy that they need to make sure that they have, you know, that sustainability all season long. So Mariah, the one thing I want to jump into here is because, because this is so much easier than I think parents realize, right? Um, I want to, and this is kind of a two-part question and this parents and coaches, this is to make your life easier. One is that I, I, we have to break this kind of stigma of like, oh, it, you know, it's a hockey game. This is good advice for all the time, like all the time, like, like processed food's not good for you at any time, much less after or before a hockey game. So can you break down quickly? Uh, you, you, I mean, as quickly as you can, I don't want to, I don't want to shorten your expertise here, but why processed foods are not good for the human body, number one. And then what are the quick, like, again, Okay, I don't have time. So what are my quick alternatives that I have to go through? Is it grapes? Is it cheese? You know, what is yeah. it, right? So what yep. again, process, the problem with processed food, which most food is, unfortunately, and what are the quick alternatives that they can go to a supermarket instead of the McDonald's to grab them? Mm -hmm. Great question. So the short and sweet Cole's Notes version is that processed food causes our body inflammation. So a lot of us understand that inflammation causes the body stress, right? And these athletes are constantly putting their body through in inflammation because of the exercise that they do. And so when you're causing more inflammation by the processed foods, then your body is just constantly in a state of stress. The second point is that processed foods, our body can't absorb a lot of nutrients from because there isn't a lot of nutrients there. And so when we're talking about, you know, building, say, for instance, this is an analogy we use with our athletes, such as, you know, the three little pigs, short and simple, right? If you're wanting to build a house, are you going to want to use the straw, the bricks, you know, or we say like just something really strong like cement or something very, very strong, right? That's not gonna get just blown down by that big bad wolf. And so those strong building blocks are whole foods. And so that's why we make sure that our athletes are prepared ahead of time. So preparing the snacks, the go-to snacks, you know, that you were asking about, like what is it the athletes need to be able to have access to? Well, we really break it down for them with their macronutrients. So that's their proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. And we make these healthy snack options that they can have and just grab and go. So a couple of examples of that would be like nuts in a container. So like almonds, Brazil nuts, even cashews, just having a mix, trail mix that we got there. We can even add that and send it to our listeners here. And then pairing that with a healthy fruit. So that could be like a banana or an apple or some dried fruits like dates or goji berries. And so by just having that already in a Tupperware lined up, yes, it takes work ahead of time doing that preparation, but so does going through the drive through and spending your hard earned money, right? right. So does, so does, um, you know, thinking about ahead of time, okay, what am I gonna make for dinner? Like this takes a little bit of preparation even, okay, you know what, how does it look for the rest of my day for the kids to jump on the ice? All these things take a little bit of preparation, but it's just that little bit of effort doing that preparation ahead of time that really sets them up for success. So you just grab that snack and go. Another and stigma it's really not real that hard, too. you know? It, 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 well, it, it's not hard. And it, I, no. it, another stigma, Christy. It, you gotta it, wash it, your fruit and you put it in a container. Come on, how hard is that? What? That's easy, that's easy stuff. And growing up Italian, my parents always said the foot, I know, here I go, bringing up my Italian heritage. <laughs> but it, there's a lot of truth to be said for what, what, how we grew up. 
they always believe the food that we eat should pretty much closely look like the food that comes out of the ground and grows on trees. They were never into processed food. Everything was whole and natural and fresh. They were big believers of that. But it's hard today. And, and it's like you said, Mariah, our schedules are so crazy that it's hard to find time to do that preparation. But the way that you break it down, I mean, if you just step back and look, this is simple. We can do this. It's not that hard. Absolutely. And like you said, it's just getting over that little speed bump at the beginning, right? The learning curve. And so once you get time efficiency in the grocery store or with grocery shopping, then you make that time available to be able to prepare the snacks. And so how often are things just actually taking up space in your mind? But then when you actually do them, you're like, oh, that only took five minutes, right? right? It but it's up. actually yeah. all the guesswork ahead of time. Like, okay, what should we put together? Or what should I get from the grocery store this week? My athlete didn't actually like eating those grapes or like I've sent them grapes and crackers five times now. And now they're, they've been sent back from lunch and not eaten. <laughs> so we help them really navigate to be able to understand, you know, what, what is your athlete liking? How can we adapt that? How can we make those small changes? And then really it just provides that support for parents and for athletes. And, and Mariah, again, another thing I want to tap on, and you did say this a little bit for the people listening, because I just know how parents think, right? Your top three or five list of must grab items at the grocery store for the kids before a game. Oh, great question. So uh, coach, you know, Mike, I'm sure he knows this too, you know, practice, really preparing for games takes a whole week. Right. But if you don't have the whole week that you're preparing, at least the day before, because the nutrients that you're going to give your body the day before, that's what you're going to have ultimate access to right. the following day. So it's really all about the preparation. But if I were to bang off a few items to really grab at the grocery store for the day before, I would say definitely leafy greens. So exploring a variety of different kales that are out there. You can get, you know, arugula and spinach. They're amazing because they have healthy, um, what's called nitric oxide, what our body turns into nitric oxide. So it actually opens up the blood vessels. So this is a perfect for your hockey athletes because if you're wanting them to be able to skate those long shifts or be able to, you know, kill off that PK or be able to make those big saves in the third period, you want them to be able to have that endurance piece. And so spinach and arugula is really going to give that to them. Um, and you can disguise that even in some smoothies. Um, but, you know, having it right on their plate, uh, if they enjoy a side salad, that's great as well. Another thing, it would be something high in antioxidants. So this can be anything from like your berries. Um, so you can get them frozen or fresh. Again, throwing them in a smoothie is a great way to have those as well. Um, and then the last, the last couple components would be to have a really healthy carbohydrate. So we want something like quinoa, sweet potatoes, a brown rice or wild rice from an organic source. And you can just honestly cook that up with some chicken broth and have that in like a big quantity in the fridge. And then you can just warm that up. And then lastly, a healthy protein source. So you want to make sure that you're having some type of, you know, if you're having it the day before, you can have it with the skin on. And that way you can get some healthy, uh, you know, fats in there as well. There's a lot of misconceptions about, you know, animal skin fat. But um, if you are following a diet where you do follow and eat animal protein, then, you know, having some chicken or some steak in there as well, it will be a great source. It's a great suggestion. And for the parents out there that go, my kid will never eat kale or spinach. Look, Mariah is giving you the key. Put it in a shake. It completely masks the taste, which is really not that bad. But uh, I make shakes for my kids and they, they ask for them now. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, 80% uh, of the time, they don't really know what's in them. And that's okay. I, I don't right. lie to them. But you can get this stuff to your kids quickly. Um, it's easy to buy. And Mariah, like you said, it just takes a little bit of time to kind of put the time in the research. You know, the other analogy I was going to make um, is, you know, look, we've all heard about your body being your temple and how important your body is. Uh, and it's obviously true. 
But when it comes to the money and the time, I go, you know, we'll buy our kids $200, $300 sticks that they really don't need when they're in youth hockey. Again, when you get to pro hockey, it's a little different. I'll admit that, or even the higher levels. But you're willing to buy that stick for them on a whim, but we're not willing to take care of their body. That That is a little bit of a stigma that needs to change. And then, Mariah, the other thing I wanted to make sure that we asked you, again, kind of just check it off the boxes for the parents. Here's a big question I get. No, but going to the grocery store is more expensive than going to McDonald's or Burger King or wherever, Wendy's, you know, all the old favorites. Um, and is that true? So if you are going to buy processed food, nine times out of 10, if you're buying it from a grocery store, you can even buy processed food that's way less expensive than whole foods. Yes, you're going to you're gonna find cheaper foods. If you're going to restaurants day in and day out and you're eating through drive throughs majority of the time, it's actually three times more expensive than it is to buy groceries from a grocery store, buy whole foods and actually just prepare it ahead of time. And so we understand, listen, kids wanna be kids. They wanna have burgers, they wanna have fries. And so we do not do any food shaming. We do not, right. you know, say you have one cheat day. So eat all this like binge foods on that one day because listen, let's face it. We want these kids to be able to have healthy relationship with food. And at the end of the day, they're going to develop a healthier relationship with food. If you as a parent are really involving them in the, in the shopping process and in the cooking process, they're going to understand before they go off to college, what it means to actually make a meal versus just, you know, understanding how to make pasta and scrambled eggs. Cause that's what we see nine and times ramen. out of 10. Don't when forget kids, top yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I'm doing that now with my uh, college age hockey player. I have a question for both you and Mike, because Mike, you've used Mariah, right? Yeah, I mean her and and uh, Coach Joshua. You know, we've been, I've been following them for a little while now, and okay. I, I just it, yeah. But I'll, I'll you ask your question, and I, I, I love question. Okay, you. so you have this relationship. You've you've seen the value. What kind of difference have you seen in the athletes who follow? is subscribed to it as far as their energy level their attitude their promptness does it make a difference and what kind of a difference have you seen oh it's just tremendous mike you jump in there first and i'll follow up <laughs> yeah so i mean mariah and josh well first of all you could tell from mariah just from a nutritionist point of view and joshua it, it, the, the energy level that they have is contagious to the to the kids they're working with now i'm working with a young boy he's like he's like a young man and he you know he is the same way i want my burgers i want to have a piece of pizza but they he he's changed his eating habits literally in the last three weeks of just understanding that okay i'm going to be a part of the shopping list this is what i want i'm going to test like we joked around a little bit you know he had this like uh, kasha you know, cereal in the morning is like, this is cardboard. I hate it. And, and then he went to something else that was a little less, you know, uh, you know, just instant change from fruit loops. But then, you know, you, then he, but then he started going back to saying, Hey, I love making a, a, a you know, a, a scrambled egg omelet in the morning with, with spinach, which he would never eat spinach. And not that he didn't like spinach. You know, he's a great, he's already a great eater. And I think, but one of the things that, that especially for teenage boys, teenage athletes with their, what I'm finding is like his habits are changing even his teammates habits you know where kids are leaving and and he's they're looking at him like why do you have like a pre-made like cooler between games like we just had a tournament weekend you know he was able to you know text Mariah and her group and say listen I got a game at one I got a game at five I can't have a full meal what can I what can I do and, and me as a parent you know the easy thing is just to go to Chipotle right and get a big thing of, of of dinner and but it doesn't help you know again i don't know if three weeks can tell a difference but i could tell the consciousness of looking and and understanding what goes into your body and then what feels good at certain times of the day um i definitely want coach mariah to talk about um the water intake and 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 you know what what they prescribe from, from a nutritionist point of view but christy honestly when you look at you know a kid that goes like i didn't know what cacao cacao uh you know flakes were or you know e eating banana and cacao and how that could help kale and chips. i love kale, kale chips. chips but all these kind of things are all these kind of things are and they and to, to lee's point uh, we, you know I'm, we're really conscious of, of what we're spending at the grocery store it's actually i think less money i think when when you 
because because you're eating you're eating better quality foods and you're eating enough to sustain you and you're not buying a lot of junk that you just don't need and i think at the end of the day it actually probably saves you money because you're being much more conscious about portion control what you're buying when you're buying it and then not buying like that processed food that's going to sit in the fridge for three weeks it's something you're going to eat the next the next day and i think that's so important but, but, but Mariah, so if you could talk true, about Mike. you know those Thank pieces you. yeah yeah, thank you so much for saying that. And it's so true, honestly. Just the biggest part that we want the athletes and the parents to take away from this is developing that consciousness, being involved in the experience. Because we see, even within the first three days of being in the program and doing what we have them do, which is a three-day mindful eating journal activity. And so they log everything they eat, everything they drink, all the supplements they take, and associate it too with the activity activity that they're doing with on ice, off ice, etc. And just with that activity, just with writing down what they're eating, they already build this awareness around, wow, I didn't realize I was having three Gatorades in one day. Or, oh my goodness, I didn't realize I was skipping breakfast. And that's why I was dragging on the ice at practice later that night. And so just that consciousness and awareness is amazing for, for these athletes to be able to see. And it helps the parents too, really, to be able to see, you know, their athletes develop this relationship with food. But, you know, um, I think the next point we were going to dive into there was a couple of results. And then we'll dive into the hydration tips because we want these parents to be able to, you know, everyone listening here today to be able to walk away some with some actionable things that you guys can implement for your athletes right away. So first things first is these results. Christy, Mike, and Lee. I like feel like jumping over the moon for these kids because this is exactly what I wanted when I was in high school. You know, I was constantly head to head with my mom. She would be cooking healthy food. I would just want, you know, bagel with cream cheese, going through Tim Hortons, good old Canadian drive through <laughs> But, you know, the biggest thing you do for an athlete is you show them results. Once you show them results, they're hooked. And that's exactly what implementing these nutrition strategies does, is it gives them fast, easy results. And they're long-lasting, too. So we've had athletes jump in at the bantam age level within three months, gain 15 pounds of lean muscle mass. That's without supplementation. That's without guzzling down weight gain or protein four times a day, drinking these, you know, like it, it just without doing all that, right? This is with eating whole foods strategically at specific times for their body to have access to the energy and not become sluggish on the ice. Listen, we're not trying to make bodybuilders here we're making athletes that are hockey athletes so they need endurance they need strength so they can have battles in the corner and win them come out of the battle with the puck but we also need them to be able to be fast so then those first three strides are really explosive so him you know athletes like this gaining this kind of weight it's just in a really sustainable way and that's what's so exciting other things we've seen is um an athlete female athlete jumping into the program she's a junior in high school and uh she actually just committed um to university of uh, minnesota duluth and um she just incredible she 5x'd her pull-ups in um, it was three weeks. Wow. She five X her pull-ups five X five X. And I know, I know for female athletes, Christy, I'm sure you see this too with your daughter in college. I was forever struggling with pull-ups, right? To five X your pull-ups by changing nothing but your nutrition. It's just these, you know, these trainers are like, what are you guys doing? And it's just giving your body the building blocks. Like we were talking about at the beginning of the episode, to be able to perform at that level. These athletes, like you see it firsthand parents, you're driving them to the rink. They wanna be on extra ice. They wanna put in the work. They're doing that at home workouts during COVID. Listen, Chrissy, you're talking about it yourself. You're like, my daughter is an inspiration for me, yeah. right? And so <laughs> these athletes are so committed. And so that's why this last piece of the puzzle, that nutrition piece, it just really unlocks their full potential so they have access to it. So a couple, you know, quick, easy tips that you guys can put into place for their hydration would be number one. Okay. Easiest tip ever switch them to drink out of a straw. 
naturally humans drink better out of a straw we just take in more fluid instead of drinking even out of a squirt bottle even out of a shaker cup in, even out of a glass, we will drink more out of a straw. So getting like a, a tall glass like this with a straw in it, already your athlete's gonna drink more water. Yeah. If they're not a natural water drinker, then infuse it with some frozen berries or some fresh mint, or even just throw in a little bit of like healthy juice, such as pomegranate juice or cranberry juice or blueberry juice in there and dilute it. And then that way it'll give them some natural flavor instead of adding in any artificial drops or giving them, you know, these sugary sports drinks. We want to make sure that we're keeping them hydrated with healthy things that are actually helping their body. So in terms of the actual hydration piece, you want to make sure that you're having five to seven milliliters at least four hours before exercise. So you want to make sure, you know, this isn't massive amounts. Every parent, I'm sure, you know, has even felt it yourself when you try and go on that run or you jump on the treadmill and you have some extra water in your belly and it's sloshing around. Well, your athletes don't like that either. When they're on the ice, they don't want to feel that sloshing feeling when they're trying to skate hard. And so that's why we keep it to a minimum up to having it close to jumping on the ice. But we want to make sure that that hydration is happening all throughout the day. And then two hours before you jump on the ice, you want to have three to five milliliters of water. And so when your um, athlete is just riding in the car, you know, maybe you have a long trip to the rink, that's when you're going to be able to just sip on some water. We want to make sure that we're not giving the body too much water in, in, uh, in the system to overwhelm it, but just enough so then your muscle, their muscles have access to it. Right. I got a question about the sports drinks because, you know, the commercialization of sports drinks has all of us parents believing that's a good thing for our athlete to have, especially after the game. I see so many parents line up at the vending machines or the concession stand saying, I'll take one of those, you know, blue colored, you know, uh, sports drinks. Whatever I'll take aid. yellow. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and they're right. thinking that's going to help them with recovery after a, a hard fought game. What's the truth yeah. about that? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I love to share this fact because when I heard it, it just absolutely dropped my jaw. So on average, these sports drinks, they are filled with sugar and they'll have typically, you know, anywhere between like 15, sometimes 20 grams of sugar in them. Okay. One teaspoon of sugar inflames the body for up to eight hours and so when you're giving your athlete this sports drink i know you have the best intention out there i know that these athletes parents you guys have the best intention out there but please 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 if you're gonna prepare anything prepare ahead of time with buying healthy sports drinks they are out there we are in the 21st century there are amazing sports drinks out there we are not affiliated with any of them but some of them that are good out there would be like halo um even even a bio steel it's sweetened with stevia so it's a little bit better for the body um but there's a lot of options out there nowadays that you can get for your athlete even the powders you know vega has a good powder out there that you can just have in your hockey bag give them to your your athletes to have in their hockey bag and they can just quickly scoop it in you know it doesn't take too much preparation rather than the one-time purchase um but making sure that these athletes have proper electrolyte balance is super important because they're constantly on the ice and they're constantly working out. And so for them, you know, our bodies are 75% water. And so when we have proper electrolyte balance, there is, you know, it's helping our nerve pulses. It's helping our muscles actually be able to have that efficiency. So then they can skate down the ice so much faster. It's helping them, you know, just with all of our organs, our tissues, just it's hydrating our body overall. You can have better cognitive functions. So like if you're making a split second decision to like pass the puck or shoot the puck, you're going to make the right decision, right? Hockey is all about a game of inches. And that's why when you can take something in your control and actually take ownership of it as a parent and as a player, 
it just gives you that much better of a chance to be able to win against your competition and become the best athlete that you can be. So thank Mar you for that. Mariah, I know we're really short on time. This is one of those episodes I call a Google episode where everyone listening is going to run to Google and be like, well, what is this? And what is that? And, um, where can people Google you though, right? I want to make sure we shout out the stuff that you're doing and the work that you're doing. Where, where can people Google to find more information about you and, and your organization? Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. So you can look us up at youngeliteathletes.com. And that's our website. You can read more about us, read a couple testimonials that are out there, see, you know, what other athletes and parents are experiencing through the program, um, such as Mike. And uh, you can also access our free private Facebook group at Elite Hockey Habits Hub. And so that's welcome for all hockey parents. We have hundreds of hockey parents in there just getting free tips, resources, strategies, recipes, you name it. We post it up in there for free for you guys. And so we would love to welcome you guys into the program, into the, into the Facebook group. So that's Elite Hockey Habits Hub. And we'll make sure that for those of you listening, we will link that on ourkidsplayhockey.com with the episode to make sure that you can join that. Uh, so Mariah, listen, we're going to let you go, but I'm, I'm going to hold you till you promise to come back in another episode, because in addition to all the great information you gave us today, you're also a trailblazer in your own right, playing in the PHF, you're a goaltender, you've got amazing hockey stories as well. Um, and we obviously want to be able to talk about that too, but we just don't have the time today. So, so if you promise to come back in another episode, I'll actually let you go. Not really, obviously, but, but we'd love to have you back sometime. <laughs> Listen, Lee, I can only come back if you give such a great announcement, just like the starting lineup for me next time. <laughs> All right, that's an easy one. And you have I'm to do it. do it. You have to do it for the whole panel. I'm, you have to do I'm it for the whole panel. I'm going to play some music in the background. I'll even do it. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> your starting guest today. All right, that, you, I, that's the tease, everybody. You'll have to come back. I'll but... do the sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike's just going to do what he does. Yeah, yeah. No, Crazy. No, so no, I, I, I love it. And uh, Mariah, thanks so much. I mean, I think, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I, you know, just seeing what you've done, you know, I think with my own athlete and knowing that it's not, you know, this is nothing to do really for us, even as from a sports parent point of view, it's just great stuff for any teenager, young athlete, young person to understand, you know, what goes in their body, who shop, what they're shopping for. And I, I think it's just great for any kid just to have that mindset to be able to say, okay, here's one other thing I can do to help me get through my day and, and help me focus on my education and my social life and my athletic life. So it's really been, it's really been great. And I think I would, I would recommend anybody, you know, getting on the Facebook site and looking and, and following what you guys are doing. And uh, you know, again, I think it's, it's great. And it's a great resource for any, any hockey parent for sure. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, everyone, for having me out here today, Christy. And uh, we'll definitely be back, Young Elite Athletes, on this podcast. And thank you so much for having us on. It goes both ways. That's going to do it for this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, a high-energy edition of it. For Mike Benelli, Christy Cashana burns and Mariah Fujima Gary. That's going to do it. We'll see you next time on Our Kids Play Hockey. Take care, everybody. <laughs>